Hi guys, so firstly apologies, it's been a while since I've actually posted a video, but I thought this would be a good one to do where I model the price of Bitcoin. So I've been getting into cryptocurrency quite recently and someone asked me if I had to do an IA, what would I do? And or what would I do it in? And I think this would be a very nice IA for two reasons. One, I'll be able to model it over time using mathematical functions and then perform various calculations and calculus on it to make predictions. And I think it'd be really nice. But more importantly, it's something that I'm really interested in now. And that's something I always say when you're choosing your maths exploration, choose something that you are interested in. And um, also some of the skills I'm going to be teaching you here or showing you will be very much applicable to other IAs and basically anything, any kind of modeling situation uh, for which you have data. Um, okay, so before I get started, can you please uh, subscribe, check out my other videos on YouTube, please like the video if you if you do like it. And I'll put a link to my website in the description below. Please go to I put my little logo here, uh, mrflynnib.com to see full, uh, complete IAs, um, video lessons on every topic and past paper solutions. Okay, let's get going. So what I'm going to do first is simply I could have done this before, but I wanted I just want to show you how easy it is or how easy it can be to collect data. So I'm actually going to just type into Google Bitcoin daily price because I want the daily price. And I've you can see I've been to this one before. Make sure you go to um, do the research to make sure you get yourself a decent source. Go to more effort than I'm going to here. I'm just clicking on this one um, because I've been here before and they have a nice little feature where I can download this data. But surely Yahoo Finance is pretty good. OK, so here I'm going to download the data. So this is this is the data I'm going to get. It's the date, open price, high price, low price, close price. I'm just going to deal with the open price. So let's let's open this here. OK, so this is the opening price of the day of Bitcoin. And this is so what, I, what am I today? This is the I'm a, it's the 21st of March 2021. And this is exactly one year ago. It was six thousand dollars. Now, if you look at my if you look at my um, well, this screen here, it's currently fifty seven thousand dollars. So it's gone up and um, it's gone up nearly 10 times the price. So what I'm going to do is I want this data here. So I'm going to get select all this. There's 365. There should be. 367, I guess, because or OK, it's both inclusive of both days. Plus there was that heading there. So this heading here. So here are my 365 um, data points. Now, the date is this, but I don't want I don't want it in this format because my it's going to be my x axis. So that's not going to be a nice x axis. I just want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you can say that you can label your x axis as the number of days since the 21st of March. So I'm just going to do equal row a one close bracket, press enter and you get this. And then when you drag it down, it will it will um, label all of these as the number of days. So we go all the way down to here and it does that. Nice. Now, another thing I've noticed here is there's a few that actually say for some reason they say null. I guess for some reason they didn't have the they didn't have the data on that day. I'm not quite sure why. You can mention it in your IA and reflect on that. Um, but I'm just going to delete it because I'm not concerned too much about that. I just want to show you the model. Okay. Once you have this, what I can do is select both of them and then I click insert scatter graph. And I get this. This is the graph of Bitcoin over time. Now you might want to you might want to look at the full year or what I think would be more interesting is looking kind of, I don't know, around here or around here. And you can do various different things depending on what your aim is. So I just kind of want to give you an idea of some of the things you can do. If I go to add chart element here and I go to trend line and I'm going to click 
more trend line options, I get this over here. Now immediately it fits a linear function on there. Now that's clearly not a good fit. This is not a linear model. That's not going to be a good fit. It looks a bit like an exponential model. Um, so I can change it to exponential. But that's actually, yeah, that's not a great fit either. And these are different. You can try different fits and discuss why this is a good, is or is not a good model, etc, etc. Let's try a polynomial. Okay, so that's actually a quadratic. And I can change the order here. All right, that's actually a really nice fit, the cubic. So that's a really nice fit. You don't necessarily want to, like each of these, as you go up the order, they'll get closer and closer, but you don't actually want to go all the way up to, say, at order six, order three is fine here. Okay, so look, that's the first kind of little thing I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how easy it is to get that. And if I click display equation on chart, it actually gives me, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this display equation on chart. It actually gives me the cubic equation and I can do different things with that. I could, I could find, I don't know if there is a minimum down here, maybe I could find that minimum. I'm interested in what happened around here. So I think like this is where I first started to invest around this bit here. And this is when it kind of really took off. Maybe I, maybe I invested around here. So I'd like to know why did it take off here? And you can use, you can find the derivative, find the gradient of the curve at these different points and discuss, look, do you remember, well, I have since studied this a bit and researched what happened, but um, Michael Saylor originally with, uh, I always forget the name of his company, with MicroStrategy, he bought like four and a half billion dollars worth of Bitcoin around here. And then Elon Musk did with Tesla, and that caused the, the price to go crazy. And, and lots of other things happened. And maybe here you want to look at, find the maximum or the minimum there and discuss why did it crash here? And then why did it pick up again, etc, etc. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing I wanted to show you the next thing. So that's, that's Excel. The next thing I wanted to show you was GeoGebra. So let's say, let's now instead of looking at the full year, let's look at, let's go down here. Let's look at maybe the last, I don't know, let's say the last 45 days, something like that. Let's go to 320. Let's highlight this. And I'm going to copy and paste this the reason because I don't want my x axis now to be 320. I want it to go back to one. So if I just, if I just do this, it automatically changes to one. So now my x axis would be the number of days since whatever date this was. Okay, now I'm going to copy this, because this is the one with the one to 47, press copy. And again, you can choose I'm only doing this very quickly, but you might want to choose, you might want to analyze the, uh, the price of Bitcoin between here and here, or a particular date, whatever. So let's go into GeoGebra. GeoGebra, one of my favorite programs, guys. Um, if you've been following my videos, you will have seen me use it a lot, GeoGebra. So I'm going to go into GeoGebra Classic. And here, I'm going to open a spreadsheet and just paste in the data. Okay, now what I'm going to do is highlight this, right click or double click on my Mac, click create list of points. So this is created a list of points. Now I can't see them because, um, well, the, the scale is all wrong. So I'm actually going to right click here and do zoom to fit. Okay, nice. Zoom out a bit. And you can remember when you're doing your IA guys, you want to label your axes, you want to make it look as nice and as pretty as possible. Um, so get the zoom right again, I'm just going to do this quite quickly. Now, what I want to do is fit a function onto that. So I'm going to click this, then this, and then algebra, I want to get my algebra calculator out this. Okay. So L1, this is my list of points that is that it has created. And these are all the points, A to Z or whatever it is. Now here, I'm going to do this is a nice function with GeoGebra. 
it's a bit like the function I showed you with Excel, but I think GeoGebra is more powerful and it gives you more options of different types of functions. If I type in fit, I get a list of different fits that we can do. Like this is an exponential, this is a straight line, a log function, a logistic function. Guys, I've done seen many very good ideas using logistic functions. Um, polynomial, sine function, etc. Now you could actually maybe think about a sinusoidal function here that's going up and then down and then up. I'd like a sinusoidal function that's that also increases as it goes along. But what I'm just going to do now is a, a, another polynomial because this goes up and then down and then up, maybe a cubic. So let's look at this list of points. Um, the list of points is L1. So I just type L1 and then the degree of polynomial. So let's actually look if I put two, what it does here, let me put two again, it fits a quadratic onto that. Now clearly that's a that's not a good fit at all, is it? So it's definitely not gonna like the quadratic is definitely not gonna be a good fit. If you want, again you can do it, although arguably there'd be no reason why you'd want to put a quadratic there, but you can always put this well let's start with the cubic. Okay, so that's one that I thought that would fit nicer. So you might start with the cubic and say, hmm, and you can actually put a screenshot of this, just screenshot this, put it in your IA and label the axes and um because actually you want to be more zoomed in here so you get you get your axes labeled properly. Um so but I'm gonna just zoom out for a second. So you might put that in your IA and then reflect and say, actually, that's not a good fit. Because it it turns, it clearly goes up and then comes down and then goes up again. And this cubic, it's not that's hardly turning at all. So that's just not a good fit. Let's um, let's change this to instead of a cubic. Let's try a quartic. See what happens. If I press enter, that's my quartic. Mm, maybe a bit better. Let's try the to the power of five. So I change that to the power of five. Yeah, I like that. It goes up and then down and then up. So. Let's maybe use this one. This is my equation here. But one thing to be very careful of, guys, this, if you just type this equation into GeoGebra right here or into Desmos, it's not going to look like this because this is rounded it to like two decimal places here. But if you actually want to know what this curve looks like, if you click here, then here, then here, GeoGebra can be difficult to get your head around, I think, here. Now this rounding, you might want to look at, I don't know, five or six decimal places. Tr try different amounts of decimal places. You probably don't want to put 10 in your IA, but just be careful that you at least you definitely have enough so that it actually is pretty much the same function. Now, I'm nearly finished. Once you have this, so this is a nice function here. Once you have this function, you can do lots of things with this. You can talk about, is it, an, is it a suitable model? Does it make sense? Like certainly this equation or this function doesn't make sense over here. Makes no sense at all. Down here, this doesn't make sense unless you think it's going to suddenly just the price of Bitcoin is going to crash. But even then, that doesn't make sense in the context of this. Like why would it just suddenly just do this? It's only doing that because that's what the this quintic function does. So this is only a suitable model probably until this maximum maybe a little bit after and and from this minimum what i would find very interesting and what would show very good understanding and good mathematics and good reflection and, and all the things you need for a good ia are these minimums the maximums and minimums you can find the derivative where's the derivative equals zero and my favorite is the point of inflection at what point did things start to turn around like maybe i don't know it started crashing here but this is the point of inflection, this one here where the second derivative is zero, uh, where the concavity of the curve changes, something happened here. And again, you might want to look at it back, way back in, in the previous days. What happened to make the price of Bitcoin suddenly just go go way up? And you can, if you get this point of inflection here, or, or the maximum or the minimum, get the point, find the day, look at the date, and then refer back to the to what happened in real life, uh, what was in the news about Bitcoin on that particular day. I find all that kind of thing very, very interesting. Now, as I said at the start of this video, you can do this with anything. 
certainly doesn't have to be the price of Bitcoin. Um, whatever you want to model, if you get a nice function, you can you can do the analysis on it and come to some very nice, interesting conclusions. Okay, that's um, that's all I wanted to say about that. Hopefully, um, hopefully you found that useful. Again, guys, please uh, like the video and subscribe. That is that always really really helps. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully, I'll try and do one. Um, I'll try and do one uh, in less time than it took me to do this one. Okay, all the best. See you in the next video.